Hello friends, I am Dr. Nishan Sagar. I am part of the uh, SS faculty of Marrow. So I am I'll be dealing with the cardiology part. So this is a, on how to approach cardiology for NEET SS21. So Rakesh has just given you an entire idea on how to approach the super specialty in general. So all of us faculties will be coming with our individual approach on what topics you have to particularly focus on. So again, these are our well laid plans. They've been completely destroyed and bombarded by the NAT board. So, I had friends who were studying uh, cardiology from Braunwald, from nephrology, from Pihali, all those voluminous books for the past one year. And finally, at the last moment, NAT board comes and changes the syllabus. So again, it has created absolute chaos and havoc and some people are really desperate. So again, no one likes change, but remember, change has happened. It's up to you and up to us to pivot and adapt so that you get a better rank. So it requires a shift of strategy and uh, the syllabus has changed to the PG exit level. So no more you have a higher standard, you will have a pretty, you have a lower standard which is at the PG exit level. So again, you need to strategize and plan on how to approach the exams. Again, remember the difference between the topmost rankers and your mediocre rankers is not the effort that they put in, that is there, but also on how they put their effort, where they put their effort, it's planning and strategy. So what should I study? See, I'm not going to tell you how to study. That is a ridiculous concept. As Rakesh said, you're all in your late 20s or early 30s. Some of you might even have kids and you'll be teaching them how to study. At this age, for me to come and say that you have to study like this, to, for me to come and give you a timetable and you say, and to say that you have to study such and such a topic in such and such a time is ridiculous. You're all adults. You can study in your own way, in your own pattern. And you're all mature enough people for that. I'm going to focus on what should I study? That's a very important thing. Not how to study, what to study. There are two groups of people who write an exam. People who have read everything. So they are the guys who read Harrison four to five times. They are the people who read Braunwald three to four times. They know everything. We all know such people. So these are people, men of focus, commitment and sheer will. For them, I can pro probably offer nothing. The rest of us mere mortals, the vast majority, this is something I can work on. So we'll focus mainly on smart study not just taking up Harrison and reading from cover to cover, what to particularly focus our efforts on. Remember, time is limited and your efforts are also going to be goal directed and according to the time available. So what to study? Remember that there's a famous principle called Pareto principle where 20% uh, of inputs result in 80% of outputs. This is where Marrow comes in. This is where me, Rakesh, Baishav or all of us come in to tell you where to put in your efforts, where to focus on so that you get your best possible rank available and possibly get your dream branch. So we'll tell you where to put your efforts. And again, you can follow us, you cannot, you need not follow us. That's all up to you, but we'll tell you where to put, put in your efforts. So basically we have been writing competitive exams for a long time. We have been, we have finished our DM course. So we know what is the important areas. We know what are, what are the areas where the exam li examiner likes to focus. And that is what we are going to tell you. That is what we are going to direct our efforts to. So one question is, should I read Harrison? So I have received calls from several people saying that they are feeling desperate and they have started reading Harrison cover to cover. Again, see, it's not an advisable thing. See, I have passionately hated Harrison all my life. So remember, Harrison is a pretty voluminous textbook. It takes around probably around one to two years at least to read it. So if you are thorough with Harrison, you may maybe maybe go for a quick revision. But if you have not read Harrison for a long time or you have not read Harrison at all, I would suggest that this is not the time where you take up Harrison. Remember, we are going in for smart study. This is not the time where you take up Harrison and start reading cover to cover. This is not the time where you start reading Harrison blindly. That is a ridiculous approach. So uh, we'll suggest focused and targeted study. Will questions only be asked from Harrison? This is the other question which people ask. Remember that Harrison is a standard medicine textbook. It is not the only standard medicine textbook. And remember the NAT board has nowhere said that they are going to ask questions only from Harrison. Remember, even Braunwald or Fihali, these are all your reference textbooks. Questions can be asked from them. It's my estimation that around 40 to 50 questions will be at a higher level and these will actually be your rank determining questions. This will be actually be the difference between not getting a seat and getting a seat in a prestigious college in a branch of your choice. Should I read super speciality textbooks? Definitely not. You don't have the time. You have around 65 days probably left. So this is not the time when you pick up super special textbooks. So remember, we are going for goal directed study or targeted study. So what is my approach to need super specialty cardiology content? Again, this is my approach. You can follow it or not. It's all up to you. So 
there are 62 hours of cardiology content in the, in the marrow app i would su i would suggest that you watch around 20 to 22 hours again i'll tell you what topics to watch so this will be around one by third okay and so if you watch around four hours per day you can finish it off in five days again you can watch it in that particular manner or you can watch it in a manner which i recommend probably watch one hour a day and finish it off maybe in around 20 to 30 days because my videos are pretty exhaustive so you can so it's probably you'll get super saturated so you'll probably watch one hour a day watch it around 20 to 30 days anyway you can finish off there are only 20 hours so you can finish off pretty easily so why should i listen to the videos why should i not go and read a particular textbook so remember, we, are, we have taken pains, we have referred a lot of textbooks, we have, we have given videos in a conceptual manner with a lot of diagrams so as to permit easy understanding. So we, have, we are encouraging not for you to buy heart a particular thing, but to understand. You get a lot of high yielding facts within a small amount of time. That's why I suggest you watch those videos. You also get updated guidelines. In cardiology, most of your guidelines have changed. Your infective endocarditis guideline has changed, your valve guidelines completely have changed. Your definition of pulmonary hypertension has changed. All this have changed after 2018. This was the year Harrison and Brown was released. And they will ask you questions based on the updated guidelines. So for example, the new definition of pulmonary hypertension is a mean PAP of 20 millimeters. Harrison and Brown gives you as 25. So you cannot say that just because Harrison gives you as 25, the answer should be 25, not 20. So remember, you need updated guidelines. And of course, you get an extra edge. Remember, this is an exam why they you are writing to identify. Let's repeat this particular point. So you get an extra edge. So remember, this is an exam in order not to pass the candidate. This is an exam in order to find the most meritorious candidate. So any small bit of extra edge you get will be extremely valuable. Should I go back and read Harrison after wa watching these videos? I suggest no. I think my videos are pretty comprehensive and uh, they explain things well. I suggest that you just see those videos and uh, not go and back refer Harrison afterwards. Should I do MCQs? Yes, according to me, MCQs are the best uh, method for testing a particular candidate. So, Maro is coming up with an MCQ bank with an MCQ based test series. So, that will help you and help to focus more of the subject on your mind. So, what are the topics you have to learn? So this is my this is my marrow cardiology super specialty content. The ones given in red are the ones whose videos I want you to watch in the app. The ones in black you need not watch it. I'll give you a MCQ based discussion of all the important MCQs from this particular topic. So again, Takasubo and ARVD is one I want you to watch. So this contains non-compaction cardiomyopathy also. You can completely skip non-compaction cardiomyopathy. Just force focus on Takasubo and ARVD. HCM is something you should know in Toto. It's a very important topic. Whether you are MBBS, whether you are MD, whether you are DM, post DM, HCM is still king. You have to know everything on HCM. Again, myocarditis, another important topic for you to know. Okay, very important points. DCM, RCM, drug and toxin to cardiomyopathy, whatever important MCQs is there, we'll cover it in an MCQ based discussion. Pericardial diseases part one and part two. So pericardial disease part one will basically cons consist of acute pericarditis and tamponade. Part 2 is basically chronic constructive pericarditis. Again, my discussion is around 2 hours and 45 minutes. Okay. So I have gone in exhaustively and covered uh, why you have a prominent X descent, why you have a prominent Y descent. That is pro not probably required for you. So Rakesh's video has a video. Rakesh has a video around 65 minutes. I suggest that you see that video and not my particular video. Again, whatever MCQs are required, we will cover an MCQ based discussion. So what about heart failure? I would want you to look at the basics of heart failure video. The reason is how I prepared that video was I wrote down all the MCQs which have been asked from heart failure and I mixed and matched them and that is how I made that particular video. So if you look at that video, you get a lot of MCQ coverage. HEFREF is a video I want you to go back and see because Bronwa, uh, the Harrison is a pretty pathetic uh, description on HEFREF. So please look at the HEFREF video. HEFREF is part of the Physician's course. Okay. HEFPEF is mainly a cardiologist topic, but HEFREF is def definitely an MD medicine topic. Again, CRT, MCS, you can probably completely skip. Again, arrhythmias, cardiac channelopathy is part one and part two. So I want you to look up on Brugada. Okay. And LQT. Among LQT, I want you to know the genetics of LQT and the precipitating factors. 
again even if you don't have time it time for it we'll cover that in a particular video but please brugada is a very important topic it's a very hot topic also mechanism of cardiac arrhythmias i want you to have a look it's only a 23 minute video again it covers a huge number of mcqs so for that 23 minutes it will be well spent svt is a thing probably you need not require again i'll cover that in mcq and uh, af again a very important topic i have gone into extreme detail regarding af the pill in the pocket approach how to approach various cases the entire af i have taken up in a case based manner so that because you are md medicine you will frequently see a lot of af cases ventricular arrhythmias although important see most of you guys will know about ecg the main thing they are going to ask you is how to differentiate between a vt and svt i guess you will probably already know that in either case we'll to discuss that as a mcqs icd pacemakers probably need not know bradyarrhythmias again it's basically whatever questions have been asked you know the super specialty level are pretty basic so if you have a basic understanding of ecg how to identify complete heart block most of your problems will be solved so from this i want you to go and look at the brugada mechanism of cardiac arrhythmias and af the remaining we can maybe have a mcq based discussion cad again something which you cannot miss okay so if you are an examiner you will automatically pick up questions from cad remember the guidelines have also changed so i want you to look at everything on cad assessment of reperfusion probably not required so it's a 13 minute video only so if you see that i have even told you this is probably not required nstemi is a video which is upcoming all the other videos are on the app nstemi is a video which i have yet to record i'll do so in the subsequent weeks but please remember cad is something you cannot miss people questions will be asked and especially since the guidelines have recently been changed there will be questions asked from that also valvular heart disease of course you cannot miss it okay and uh, you have to study everything on valvular heart disease maybe prosthetic heart valves you can skip okay and in the aortic stenosis part you can skip the taver part okay so that will save you around 30 minutes see although this list looks to be big you have been studying that right from the days of second year mbbs so you know what the murmur of ms is you know what the clinical features are you know what the management is also it is just fine tuning so i promise that the amount of time you put in will be worthwhile and when you do this you get a lot of questions on clinical cardiology also so again valvular heart disease and cad you have to put all your efforts in so coming to special topics in cardiology i want you to focus on thromboembolism and acute aortic syndromes is basically aortic dissection okay these are two important topics and uh, they are two life threatening conditions so they are likely to focus their attention on questions from these areas again the other topics we'll try to cover in mcq based discussion so cardiac tumors myxoma is important pulmonary hypertension the definition has changed the classification is important but we'll cover that as an mcq based discussion pregnancy and heart disease you are supposed to know the physiological changes of pregnancy and the conditions which are worsened by pregnancy so the physiological changes you have one particular slide for that and uh, two slides on conditions worsened by pregnancy again if you don't look at that video also it's not a problem we'll cover that on an mcq basis so again venous thromboembolism acute aortic syndromes very important covid in the heart and congenital heart disease these are topics i suggest that you need not have a look at these videos covid any anyway, you will be more thorough than even me because you have been managing covid cases your physicians and uh, anyway you will have a detailed uh, understanding on covid from the medicine side congenital heart disease is one module which i have taken extreme pains and a lot of time to prepare but unfortunately and remember the congenital heart disease is a co- hardcore cardiology topic it's not a physician's domain so again i don't think you need to put in much effort for congenital heart disease any case harrison gives you around 8 to 10 pages on congenital heart disease if you want you can have a look at that clinical cardiology ecg and chest x ray see uh, you know a lot of things on clinical cardiology even if you study that valvular heart disease chapter you will probably have a lot of mcqs you will probably gain a lot of mcqs from that so I, I think that uh, you need not put some a degree of particular effort for learning clinical cardiology. In any case, Rakesh has a module on pulse, JVP, and murmurs. You can have a look at that. ECG. I mean, you have your basic knowledge that will be more than enough. Again, chest X-ray. Whatever chest X-rays I have discussed, that's probably more than enough. In any case, if there are more exam pertaining X-rays, we'll have a look at that during the MCQ based discussion. So with this, you'll have around twenty to twenty-two hours of videos to watch. so around 4 days around 5 days if you watch for around 4 hours you can finish the entire cardiology module and uh, again you can have around 2 days uh, being kept for mcq based discussions so at around 1 week you can finish off cardiology and you can focus your attention on the other subjects so cardiology is also an important subject around i expect around 15% of your questions 
or 15 maybe even 20 percent of your questions to come from cardiology so around a uh, good chunk so again it will be well worth that if you put this one week into uh, if you revise for this particular one week so Maro is coming up with MCQ based discussions, MCQ based tests and an online discussion platform. So again, if you have doubts, you can post them on this discussion platform. The details will be communicated to you and we'll try and sort them out. So take home messages, keep calm. Again, I mean, everybody is losing their head. It's your ability to keep calm that makes you succeed. Analyze and strategize. Don't go simply uh, taking up Harrison and start reading it cover to cover. That's a ridiculous and absolutely worthless uh, pursuit. Study selected topics and high yield topics. We've already told you what is important from cardiology. The other faculty will come and tell you what is important from their side. Practice MCQs. Set yourself realistic targets. Very important thing. Uh, it's not that you go and finish cardiology entirely in two days. That's not practical for you. Okay. Set yourself realistic targets. Work smart rather than work hard. Very important point. Okay. There's no, you always try to work smart. That's what I've always done throughout my entire, uh, right from MBBS all the way to when I finished my DM. I've always tried to work smart. See, when I wrote my DM exam, I had not read Harrison. Okay. I had read around 30 to 40 percent of uh, Braunwald only. But I had focused my efforts on those chapters which are frequently asked. And that is how I got through. That's why I say work smart rather than work hard. Just don't go and blindly read the entire book. So out of adversity comes opportunity. So what is what is what looks to be an adversity for you right now may actually be a golden opportunity for you and this might actually cause you to get your dream seat. Difficult roads lead to beautiful destinations. And we are with you. You are not alone.